Good morning, Booker Tov. Welcome back to Parsha Perspectives for today. As always, we are grateful to our series sponsor, Becky and Avi Katz and family, in memory of their father and grandfather, David Grossman, Ilya Nishmas, David Ben Menachem Manish. Big thank you to our dear friends, the Katz. As also this morning, Shira is sponsored anonymously with heartfelt gratitude to BRS for the inspiration, education that we impart. BRS's teachings have enriched this person's knowledge and contributed to their spiritual growth. We're very grateful to them for their generous sponsorship. A few housekeeping notes, and then we'll jump into a double Parsha. You don't give me double the time just because it's a double Parsha. It's really not right. It should be two hours when it's a double Parsha, but we'll do what we can. A few housekeeping notes. Next week, there's no Parsha Shir, because next Shabbos, we don't read a regular Parsha. Next Shabbos is Rosh Hashanah, so therefore, next Tuesday, there's no Parsha Shir. But to make up for it, tonight, 8 p.m., we are continuing our series on Mastering Our Midos. Tonight I'll speak about anger management, 8 p.m. in the social hall. It's also streamed online. You can find it on the YouTube channel. Also, tomorrow night we are honored to host Rabbi Sion Tversky for an Elul Chizik Shmuz, men and women. Thursday night we meet again at the beach, late at night, 8.30 p.m. in Boca, that's late at night, for a little learning about Hispodidus and then spreading out across the beach to have private conversations with Hashem. That's Thursday night. Yesterday was the mitzvah market. It's an entire week of incredible opportunities. Parsha Seven, page 1086 in the Art Scroll Stone Chumash. This week we read Nitzavim and Vayelach Action Pack. So much to cover, so much to speak about. We'll see how far as we can get. So let's begin. You're standing, all of you. You're standing here today. The Torah is the great equalizer. When it comes to Torah, Moshe turns to the people and he says, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your scholarship. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status. It doesn't matter your yichus. None of it matters. You could be a convert. You could be a newcomer. Ad You could be a wood chopper, a water carrier. You could be retired from the hedge fund manage, management that you did. Because for you to pass into the covenant of Hashem in appreciation that Hashem, your God, seals with you today. We're all equally bound by Torah. We're all equally accountable to Torah. We're all equally united by Torah. Torah, mitzvos, Yiddishkeit is the great equalizer. The other things are external. They're window dressing. But in our panemius, in our core, in who we are, all of those distinctions and differences they all fall away. We're equally bound. We're equally united. We're equally together in our relationship with Torah. And that's the bris, to be a people. You are his people. We are his people. We serve him. We represent him. We are his ambassadors and agents and advocates here on earth. And he's our trustworthy, faithful God. Just as he promised, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. Below itchem levatchem anochi kares is abris azos v'sal azos. And by the way, Moshe turns to those who are gathered and he says, "Not just you who are physically here today, not just you who can sign on the dotted line contractually, but as Hashem Yeshna poim manu amid ayom l'fnei Hashem lokeinu veis Hashem anu poim manu ayom." Those who are here and those who are destined to be here. Those who are present and those who will yet come. This isn't a contract where if you weren't alive or present, you shouldn't be bound by it. This is a constitution where all who will be born into it are bound by it. This is a covenant. It is a constitution. It is not a contract. And that is the answer to a young person who says, why do I have to give Torah mitzvahs? Why do I have to give up all that good food and give up my Saturdays? Why do I have to live this life and marry only Jewish I didn't take this on. I didn't agree to it. I didn't sign on a dotted line. Why am I bound by it? And the answer is it may not be a contract, but it is a covenant. It is a constitution. It is who we are. It is what we are about. It's what it means to be part of this people. So there's so much to talk about. We're all standing here. The names itself of all of Sefer Dvarim is itself a message. We've spoken about that in the past. Nitzavim Vayelach, standing and going. We don't stand. We go. Nitzavim Vayelach. We are, each person has to be on the move. We'll talk more about that. But why are we standing here? The Medrash tells us a reassurance. After last week's Tochacha, after the harsh rebuke and the dire warning, if we're disobedient to Hashem, what will happen? The Torah then says, but don't worry. Moshe says, relax. 
I know you're fight, frightful. I know you're fearful. You're filled with anxiety. What if you're unworthy? You'll be wiped out. What if the tochacha will be visited upon you? Relax. Don't worry. You got this. Even after that musr shmuz, even after I screamed and yelled and rattled you and the wall shook, you came back the next Shabbos. It was Kiddush. It's probably Kiddush Club. You need tzavim ayim kochem. You're all here. It's all good. It's all good. What is Moshe trying to undo? What, what is he doing? The whole purpose of the tochacha was to motivate, was to inspire, was to incentivize. And now he just undoes that by saying, ah, don't worry. You're here. You survived. It's all good. So the Salat of Rebbe, the Shalom, others, they say, Moshe was saying, you know, individually you're in trouble. That's the tochacha. If you live life as an individual, you're on your own. But atem nitzavim hayom kulchem. When you unite as a community, as a people, as a nation, when you're able to supplement and complement your shortcomings with other people's strengths, and you, your strength, will complement their shortcoming. When we appear before Hashem united, a community, loving, faithful, loyal, then we can survive, we can triumph, even the harshness of the tochacha of the rebuke. It is a strategy that is invoked over and over and over again. Rabbeinu Yona, Rishonu Machronu, Balei Moser, Balei Machshava, they all say one of the emphases of this time of year, when a person might recoil into their own merit, worthiness, try to organize their own argument to Hashem, coming before Hashem on the Yimei Adin, but instead, the answer is not to turn inward, it's turn outward. Be a person who the community is indispensable. Isha Klau, the Volba quotes Rabbi Yisrael Salam, to be a person who is indispensable to the community. Don't find fault in the other. Find what's right. Don't nitpick and criticize. Compliment. Don't walk away and turn away and pretend you don't see. Reach out and care and invite and ensure no one's alone. It's when we are nitzavim ayom kulchem, that's when we can overcome the tochacha of last week's parsha. But the Amaros Tahoros, the Helega Rach Meshrifka Rebbe, Zatzal, who just passed away a couple of weeks ago, he quotes the Yateris Yisrael. Who was the Yateris Yisrael? The Yisrael was a grandson of the Morenayim, the Chernobyl Helega Chernobyl Rebbe. Isa Shloyach Shavad Mo'atzom Mi Anochi Lagesh Yisrael Espalot Neshem Yisbaruch Barosh Hashem. Person might say, you know, those holy rollers, they come before God, they work all Elul, they shuckle, they daven, they learn, they attend all the tshuva lectures, they read, they sign up, they get the WhatsApp alerts, they're listening, they're learning, they're growing, and then they come and they daven in the bottom of their heart. Who am I? I've been a gornish, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody. Are you kidding? I'm not going to be so hypocritical and duplicitous that I struggle with my struggles and I battle my battles and I'm really empty and I'm really, and then I'm going to come. I know how far I am from Hashem. Some lowly, distance, Eisvarf like me, I'm going to pretend to come before Hashem. I'm going to shuckle, I'm going to daven, I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry out. I know, I'm going to save the email, I know I read quickly. I got a lot to say, it's a double parsha. Listen on half speed, I'm doing the best I can. So you'll say, only the people who are worthy, who are lofty, who are exalted, they can come, and they can cry out, and they can davel. Me? I'm pathetic. I'm lowly. I'm disobedient. I can't get my act together. I fail Hashem. I fail myself. I fail my family. I can't fulfill one promise I made from one Rosh Hashanah since I'm alive. So what, I'm going to go through the motions this next year? I'm going to just do it all over again. This Elul, this Rosh Hashanah, this Aserah Simetri, this Yom Kippur. I'm just going to pretend this year is going to be different. Al Yachshav came. Don't think that way. Chas v'shalom, never give up on yourself. Never see yourself as that reject, as that outlier, as that eisvarf. Realize everyone, no matter where they are and where they're holding, it's not too late to become who you're meant to be. The Zohar says, You're standing here today, it's Rosh Hashanah. All of you. Whoever you are and whatever you're holding, you could step forward and you could open up your heart. You could feel his love. You could begin again. You could believe in yourself. 
even if you spoke Lashonar in the lobby on your way into shul for Kol Nidre. No problem. So what? Don't give up on yourself. Start again. Decide now. I'm still a piece of God in me. It's still my father. And it's never too late to call home. It's never too late to come home. It's never late to come into the arms of your parents. And that's what these psukim mean that we're going to get to momentarily. We're going to talk about what mitzvah? Torah and Parshas says, this mitzvah, don't worry. It seems so hard. It seems impossible. It seems inaccessible. It seems difficult. It's not in the heavens. It's not on the other side of the sea. It's right there. It's close. It's right under your nose. Where is it? In your mouth, in your heart. Mitzvah is miloshon tzavsa. The word mitzvah, what does it mean, the word mitzvah? So we translate the word mitzvah always as a command. First of all, that's not a very loving metaphor. That doesn't reflect a lot of affection and intimacy and love and communication and connection. Command. Command you. Imagine the wife tells her, I command you take out the garbage. I command you make dinner. I command you pay the bills. I command you. That's the relationship with Hashem. 613 commandments. On the one hand, yes. Hashem says, jump, we say, how high? He's the Adon, we're the Evid. He's the master, we're the slave. That's one image. But he's also the father and we're the child. He's also the spouse and we are the loving other spouse. And the word savsa comes from the word sivoy, comes from the word savsa. Mitzvah, command, is the wrong translation. Or it's only one level of a translation. The word mitzvah also means tzavsa, his kashras. It means a connection. It means, do you want to feel connected to me? Do you want me to feel connected to you? Would you please take out the garbage? Would you like me to feel connected? Would you mind making dinner? Do you want to feel connected? This is a need I have. This would help me enrich my life. There are 613 connection points, connection opportunities, opportunities to offer a bid, a gesture, to connect with the Ribbonu Shalom. 613 mitzvahs seems overwhelming. It seems impossible. It seems unrealistic. But it's not. When you're in love, there's nothing you won't do for the other person. Gemara says two people in love, if they're in love, they can sleep on the side of a sword. If they're not in love, the biggest bed in the world is not big enough to hold them. The Kaddish Baruch if you're in love, 613 mitzvahs is gunish is nothing. No problem. I got it. Could do anything. It'll create a connection, an affection. I'm in. It's low rachokahi, low nifleisi mimcha. Kolachad v'achol yachol is chaber is kashir. Mashem is barchol is balam is banav. Ki mach mazrov avasol is barchol Yisrael. The kabbat filas kolachad v'achad. Hashem loves us and He believes in us. And go even farther. He needs us. And if we know that then it's not too far, it's not too impossible, it's for every single one of us. And he goes on and on, Herech Sham Harbe Bezeh, Agansa Shmuz. He has a long essay, Agansa Shmuz on this, that that's what this Pasha is really all about. Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kolchem. Do not erase yourself, don't marginalize yourself, don't dismiss yourself, and don't excuse yourself. No matter where you are, no matter where you're holding in life, no matter who you are, no matter what you think you're capable of, Yiddishkeit Torah Mitzvah is for every one of us. There's room and there's space there's meaning, there's purpose, and Hashem needs each and every one of us. No matter who, no matter how we're born, no matter what we're born into, He needs. And it's lo neflesi. If we understand a mitzvah is not a command, a mitzvah is an invitation, it's an opportunity. A mitzvah is a connection. Then the 613, they're lo rechoka, they're not far away, they're right there. The toldos, the Yamaros Tahoros quotes the toldos. The toldos was the Talmud of the Bashem who collected his teachings and spread them. This whole parsha is advice. The whole parsha is a strategy and a methodology how to appear before Hashem on Rosh Hashanah. As we mentioned earlier, it's all about Achtos. This is the time of year. Don't recoil. Don't retreat into me, my destiny, my judgment. 
you know, if, if God forbid a person is preparing for a big trial, they're appearing before the judge, their life lays in the balance, and somebody says, could you have me for dinner Friday night? So, are you out of your mind? I'm hunkered down with my team. I've got lawyers putting together our arguments. I'm earning all my merits. Leave me alone. I can't do coffee. I can't have you for dinner. I can't write you a check. Are you out of your mind? I'm so busy. This is the opposite. Preparing for trial? Lawyers, I'm sorry, I don't have time for you. An argument for myself? Sorry, I don't have time for it. What am I so busy with? I have to cook meals for others. I have to check in on others. I have to go visit and take care of and support and uplift others. I have to feel achtus. I have to love the people I don't like. I have to compliment the people I've been obsessed with criticizing. I'm so sorry, I don't have time to prepare for my trial. That's the best preparation for this trial. And that's why it's atem nitzavim ayom kulchem. And that's what the Mishnah says in Avos. Zagda told us, Alti rasha b'fnei atzmecha. The mission in the second paragraph of says, Don't be a Russia. Perish alti Russia aidesha tifrosh la atzmacha. It's a new taich, it's a new definition of the Mishnah. Alti Russia with Nayatzma doesn't mean don't be a Russia in your own eyes. It means don't be a Russia because you know what's wickedness? You know what would be wicked? With Nayatzmacha. If all you cared about was yourself, that's wickedness. Alti Russia with Nayatzmacha. Don't retreat into yourself. Don't only care about yourself. Don't prepare with your team for yourself. Care about others. Rosh Hashanah. Hayom is Rosh Hashanah. So how can you stand Hashem before Hashem on Rosh Hashanah? Atem nitzavim. You're going to stand and appear before the judge. Hayom. Hayom says the Zohar is Rosh Hashanah. What's the answer? What's the strategy? Kulchem. We're all in it together. We're a whole community. We're too big to fail. We're too big to fail. Individuals, a little neighborhood bank, Done. We've seen that this year. A bank, a little individual neighborhood bank could go under, but too big to fail. So I'm part of a, we're too big to fail. We're eight minyanim. We're a thousand families. We're super interconnected with one another. We're intertwined. Our love, our loyalty. We're too big to fail. That's our argument, Hashem. Too big to fail. And that's the winning argument. Atem nitzavim, when you stand on judgment. Hayom, which is Rosh Hashanah, kuchem. Have an attitude of kuchem. That is the strategy. Lehis kalel in kol Yisrael. Don't be apart. Don't be divided. Don't break away. Be united. The community. The answer to triumph before Hashem is community. The closer, the more connected you are to community, the more giving and selfless you are in community, the more you care and you see and you compliment others in community, the better shape you're in when nitzavim, when you'll stand before Hashem hayom, and hayom is Rosh Hashanah. Okay, that is the opening Pasuk. Moving right along. Next page. Warning against idolatry. Don't serve and worship idols. Of course, loyal, remain loyal to Hashem. Page 1090. 1090. Top of the page. The hidden sins are for Hashem. But the revealed are for us and for our children. For us to fulfill, for us to perform, for us to live by. They are for us. Now, we spoke about this Pasuk, I don't remember, last year, two years ago, three years ago. We spoke about this Pasuk in the past, and we gave many, many explanations. And I'm tempted, because they're all so great, to repeat them every year, but we can't do that. I might as well just press play. So you could listen to the past. Hanistors, the hidden are for Hashem, the revealed are for us and for our children. So much to say. But I want to just tell you one new shot, and that is from Rav Salavechik. Baruch Hashem, our Parsha perspectives, we try to offer perspectives from the Rach Meshivka Rebbe, We've been bringing a lot of Hasidus to Rav Salavechik, to Rabbi Sat, from all over, from all over. So Rav Salavechik says the following, The hidden things belong to Hashem, but the revealed things apply to us and to our children forever. A special covenant was made in order to affect the mutual arevus of all Jews for one another. Continuing along the theme, This covenant received its expression in the blessings and curses on Har Grizim Har Eval. We are all mutually responsible for one another. We are all each other's guarantors. We don't live isolated. We don't live apart. We don't live alone. We are in it together. Our Chaim HaKadosh brings a mashal. We all know it. It sounds childish. And yet, it's so childish that we adults still haven't figured it out. You're on a boat together, and a person takes out a drill, starts to drill a hole under their seat. You say, what are, what are you doing? The water's going to come in. He says, mind your business. I paid for this seat. He says, my seat. What happens in this seat is my business. Get out of my way. He said, are you out of your mind? You drill a hole under your seat. You might have paid for that seat, but the whole boat's going down. 
And that's the attitude that we have to all have in our lives, in the way that we care about one another, in the way that we support one another, but also in recognizing the accountability and responsibility we have on our actions for others. There is a trickle-down effect. It impacts others for good and for bad. We are guarantors one of the other. You know, the other night I was at a CM, Donny Oppenheimer made a CM on Shas Mishnayis. And he got up and he said, you know what inspired my CM on Shas Mishnayis? That two years ago I was at the CM of Moshe Winograd on Shas. And Moshe Winograd at his CM got up and he said, you know what inspired my CM on Shas? That Rav Yoni Levin, the Rosh Hashiva Yeshiva South Florida, he makes a CM every year on Shas, Bavli and Yerushalmi. And you know what inspired Yoni Levin, Rav Yoni Levin's CM on Shas? Everyone at their CM gets up and talks about what inspired their CM. And I was just listening and I was just connecting the dots and saying, wow, whoever made that first CM, do they even know? They'll get upstairs and Hashem will say, Shkoyach, Shas was finished a billion times because you, you say, I, I tried to learn as much as I can. I didn't hit a billion. They say, yeah, but do you know how many CM and the trickle down effect? When you do something, someone watched you daven with Kavana, they decided to daven with Kavana, someone saw you be kind and gracious and reach out and be friendly, and they were too, but the opposite's also true. You spoke Lashon Hara, and that gave license and permission to the other to gossip and slander. You were negative and hypercritical, and they joined too. You ate the wrong thing, they ate the wrong thing, you looked at the wrong thing, and so on. Shared suffering finds its expression in the awareness of shared responsibility and liability, says Rav Soloveitchik. During the Korach rebellion, Moshe and Aaron pleaded with Hashem not to punish all of Klal Yisrael for Korach's sin. Hashem agreed and punished only the congregation of Korach. But after entry into Eretz Yisrael, we are held responsible for the sin of our fellow. If it is in our power to rebuke him, to protest his behavior and induce him to repent, a collective ethical halachic responsibility devolves upon the entire Jewish people. It's not an excuse to say, it's not my business. We don't have the luxury of looking the other way. We are not entitled to sit on the sidelines. If we see something, we have to say something. If we can get involved and influence and make a difference, we have to make a difference. The halacha has declared that all Jews are guarantors for one another. Consequently, one who's already fulfilled a particular mitzvah can still perform the mitzvah of a fellow Jew who has not yet performed it and thereby enable the latter to discharge his obligation. One is not himself exempt as long as his fellow Jew has not performed. Shalavitchik is referencing the Gemara. Gemara in Baruchas Megillah elsewhere says, Yatza Motzi. Somebody who's fulfilled a mitzvah can still fulfill it for another. So, it's going to come Rosh Hashanah, Mabal Tokeya. We only hear the show for once this year. You know why? Because one of the days of Rosh Hashanah is Shabbos. So we only hear the Rosh Hashanah, the show for once this year. I blow shofar. Before we blow shofar, we make brachas. Let's say then I go to my neighbor's house who wasn't able to come to shul and I blow the shofar for them. They hadn't heard shofar yet. Now it's preferable they make the bracha for themselves. Let's say they can't. Can I make the bracha for them? I, I fulfilled the mitzvah already. Isn't that a bracha levatala? Aren't I taking Hashem's name in vain? How can I make the bracha if I already fulfilled the mitzvah? By the time I get home on a Shabbos morning, I've made Kiddush five or six times. Not because I make Kiddush hopper goer. There are those people too. The difference between them and me is I also daven shacharis and musaf and heard laning. But why? Because after I spoke here, I, I made Kiddush. Then I made the Kiddush then the davening. Then I made the Kiddush at the next Kiddush. So I come home, and let's say I, I, let's say I had a child who had to be woken for lunch, and they hadn't heard Kiddush yet. Can I make Kiddush for them? It's good to be young. Can I make Kiddush for them? What's the answer? Yes, why? I, I already made Kiddush five times. How can I make Kiddush for someone else? I already fulfilled the mitzvah. So the Gemara said, Chazal say, Yatza, Motzi. You fulfilled the mitzvah? No problem. You could still be Motzi someone else. Rashi says, how does that work? Midin Arvas. Because we're guarantors one for the other. Still, how does that answer the question? If I fulfilled the mitzvah, how could I be motzi someone else? What's the answer? As long as there's a yid, as long as there's a Jew who's not fulfilled their mitzvah, I have not completely fulfilled mine. Yes, I heard Kiddush. Yes, I blew shofar. Yes, I heard Megillah. Yes, I. But if there's a Jew who didn't fulfill their mitzvah, I have not completely fulfilled mine. Enough so that I can still make a bracha that I could repeat the bracha again. That's arvus. That's arvus. That's what it means. Shared responsibility. That's what it means. Shared responsibility is not merely a theoretical halachic construct, says Rav Soloveitchik. It is also a central fact in the history of the Jewish people in its respect to its relationship to the nations of the world. Our neighbors have always condemned all of us for the sins of one of us. A Jew lands on the front page of the paper and the nations of the world say, 
all Jews are X, Y, and Z. All Jews behave A, B, and C. They've held us accountable one for the other. The identification of our actions of an individual with the people at large is a fundamental feature of our history. Our enemies will not allow the individual Jew to remain isolated in his own private separate sphere. They regularly point to the behavior of the individual as a means to indict the entire community. Such censure applies only to Jews and not to other nations. You don't find an African-American, a Hispanic, an Asian. You don't find somebody else on the cover of the paper and you say, all X, Y, and Z. You don't say a Christian, a Muslim bathed in this way. All are that way. The Jew alone has that, bears that responsibility. The commandment of the sanctification of the divine name, the prohibition against desecration can be explained in light of this principle of shared responsibility. The actions of the individual are charged to the account of the community. Any sin besmirches the name of the Jewish people in the world. The individual must therefore answer not only to his own personal conscience, but also to the collective conscience of the people. We are responsible one to another. You make a kiddush Hashem, someone sent me a newspaper yesterday, someone sent me an article yesterday about an Orthodox Jew, a Hasidic Jew, who uh, went to the bank and took out $5,000 and went home and counted it and had 6000 So what did he do? He went back to the bank and he said, I got 1000 too much. And the bank said, who, who are you? What are you? What are you made of? Where do you come from? Isn't that amazing? People call me sometimes with, with such a shayla. I ordered on Amazon. They sent me two. I only paid for one. I ordered this. They sent me the more expensive, better edition. Do I have to return? Do I have to? So it's a complicated halacha question because Knevas Akum might be mut. This is a big question. It's possible. It's permissible to keep it. But I always encourage. I say call and call and say, Hi, I received the order, I got two, I only paid for one, and as a Torah-observant Orthodox Jew, my religion tells me the moral thing is to call and to say, should I send it back? Don't just say, should I send it back? Identify yourself. Use the opportunity to advance the Jewish people, the Jewish cause. Our religion teaches that God wants me to call you and ask you if I have to send it back, if I should send it back. Use it to make a Kiddush Hashem. Because when you do that, and then an article is positive in the paper, everyone says, mm, Jews are pretty honest. That's amazing. I want a piece of that. And if the article says something else, they say Jews are all terrible. And that is the concept of Arevas. Says Rav Salavitchik, it comes from our Parsha. Perak Lamed Pasuk Yudalaf. Bottom of that page. What we alluded to a moment ago. My friend Avram Fried composed a beautiful song from these words. This commandment I command you today, it's not hidden from you, and it's not too distant. This is what we saw the Amar Astaro said, Mitzvah Milashon Tzavsa, his kashras. It's not a command, it's an opportunity. It's an invitation. It's a connection. This mitzvah, what mitzvah? This mitzvah. Which mitzvah? Torah doesn't say. Torah doesn't tell us. This mitzvah, whichever one it is that I'm not telling you explicitly, but a mitzvah, you should know it's not beyond you. It's not impossible. It's not too in the heavens. It's not the other side of the sea that you could say, how am I going to cross the sea to do it? Another great friend. These are all people who have been behind the bima. You can watch these interviews and learn from them. They're great songs. Avram Fried, Eitan Katz. Right to the neshama. Kikara ve'lecha. So it's in your mouth and it's in your heart to be able to do. Ki ha mitzvah hazos. This mitzvah. Which mitzvah? This mitzvah. Which mitzvah? Which mitzvah? So, says Rashi, Lo ba shamayim ishi, lo aisa ba shamayim ishi tzorach la'alo sacharel l'lamda. If it was in the heavens, you'd have to climb to the heavens to get it. But good news, you don't need a ladder. You could be afraid of heights. Ki karav elach, it's right down here on earth next to you. It's right under your nose. And what is it, says Rashi? Torah written in all. Torah, you know what the mitzvah is? Torah. All of Torah. Learning Torah. Living Torah. 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 That's the mitzvah. That's the mitzvah. In fact, the Gemara in Irvin Nunhei says, Lo bashamayimi, lo timatsei, lo timatsei ba shemagbiya daito ala kashamayim, velo timatsei mishamarchiv daito ala kayam. You won't be able to learn Torah if you are too distracted. Lo timatsei begasei ruach. Lo bashamayim. Bashamayim doesn't just mean the heavens. What does it mean? Bashamayim. Who thinks they're so high? Those who are arrogant. Lo bashamayim can mean if you're high. You can't learn Torah if you're high. Live Torah if you're high. And you can't learn Torah and live Torah if you're too high on yourself. 
If you're too arrogant. If you're a sailor, if you're a merchant, if you travel, if you're obsessed and consumed by business, you can't learn, you can't live Torah. But the Gemara is learning, what's the mitzvah azos? Torah. Come along the Ramban, the Sforno on our parasha. And the Ramban and the Sforno say, what's the mitzvah azos? A mitzvah azos is? Tshuva. And what's the raya? What's the proof it's, to, it's tshuva? Repentance, repair, return. Says the Ramban, where is this mitzvah found? It's not in the heavens, not on the other side of the sea, not too far away. Where is it? Beficha in your mouth, uvelvavcha, and in your and in your heart. What mitzvah is in your mouth and in your heart? Tshuva, repentance. It's in your heart because you will to return. How is it in your mouth? The Ramban paskins, an indispensable part of tshuva is Vidui, you have to confess, you have to admit, you have to articulate what you did wrong. So the Achronim ask, how could the Ramban and the Svarna say the mitzvah azos is tshuva when Chazal already said it's Torah? Which is it? Torah or tshuva? The Torah itself, the Parsha itself, leaves it ambiguous. It's mysterious. It never spells out what is this mitzvah kiyah mitzvah azos. But Chazal say it's Torah. So who are the Ramban and the Svarna? To come off saying it's tshuva, good. So listen to this answer. It's in a beautiful sefer Nimos Yameru, quotes from the Nitziv and others. The Kloisenberger Rebbe and the Chaim. The Kloisenberger asked similarly. A little bonus sitter snippet for you. We're already up to the eighth bracha of Rafainu, but going back a couple. Tahashivenu avinu l'sarasecha. Frank the Kloisenberger, the Shefachaim, asked the Kloisenberger, Hashivenu avinu, the bracha called tshuva. What do we say, Hashem? I want to return to you. I want to repair. I want to redeem myself. Hashivein avinu to what? Come on, people. You say this bracha three times a day. Hashivein avinu le sorasecha. Why do I say return me to your Torah? That works if where I went wrong is Torah. I never learned Torah. I distorted Torah. I uh, perverted Torah. I was mavato Torah. So now I understand. Hashivein avinu le sorasecha. Bring me back to your Torah. But what if where I went wrong was not with Torah? Why is the automatic Hashivenu avinu lisora secha. What does tshuva have to do with Torah? Learn Torah and then do tshuva. What do Torah and tshuva have to do with one another? And Rav Chaim Velazhner says, in the Heligen Nefesh Chaim, the Holy Nefesh Chaim Shar Dalid, Perglamet Al, the Nefesh Chaim says the following. Listen to these words. Bo urei kama gedola kocha shal Torah. Shemitaher says, Poshe Yisrael bezman shos and tshuva. I feel me avodas kocham shabiyadam. Torah has the ability to repair to purify, to purge. Ki ikar ha-tshuva shleima ha-amitis hu rak a-idei esa ka-tora kara-oi. If you want to do tshuva, you cannot do it without Torah. Why not? Why is Torah critical to tshuva? Because how do you do a self-reflection? How do you do an evaluation? What is the mirror you hold up to yourself to know where you went wrong if you don't have the absolute truth of Torah? Torah is the mirror. Torah is the barometer. Torah is the metric. Torah is the measure of knowing where we went wrong. And how do you know what to do to repair, what to fix, what to improve, how to go right? If you don't have the formula, the blueprint for creation, if you don't have the instruction manual to get it right, and Torah is the answer. So tshuva is not just some theoretical, spiritual, lofty, I want to be better, I want to improve, uh, you know, kumbaya, humanistic. Torah, the formula, Torah, the Ratzon Hashem, the diary of the Almighty, of the Divine, Torah tells us is the, is the compass to help us navigate where we went wrong and how we can go right. So says Rechaim Velazhner, Iker tshuva shlema amitis, rakai de isak ha-Torah karoi. And that's why the Nitzvah and Zenim Agdavar explains. Which is it? Rashi. Ki ha-mitzvah azos, ha-parsha. Ki ha-mitzvah azos. Is that Torah? Or the Ramban and the Sforno is a tshuva. And what's the answer? A zel bazach. Zel bazach. What does that mean? One and the same. Torah and tshuva are one and the same. You can't do tshuva without the compass of Torah. And every contact with Torah should cause you to do tshuva. Every parsha class, every daf yomi, every amad shvui, every nach yomi, every amunashir, every time you learn Torah, it should cause you to say, I want to be better. I can be better. I now understand this better. I'm now empowered and enriched to be better. Torah is tshuva, tshuva is Torah. There's Zel Bazach. They are one and the same. And that's why 
the Navi Yoshea says, Shuva Yisrael Ad Hashem Lokecha, Kechui Machem Devarim. How do you do Shuva? By Kechui Machem Devarim. What's the Kechui Machem Devarim? What are the Devarim? Ein Devarim Ela Divrei Torah. Learning Torah is the way to do Shuva. And that's why, suggest this beautiful Savior Nimos Yameru, that's why we say every day right now, Perach of Zion, Ashkenaz, we say after Shacharis and Marim, Nesach Tzvar, say after Mincha. But we say, L'David Hashem Ori V'Yishi. And in there we say, B'zos Ani Boteach, Im Tachane Alay Machane, Lo Yirali Bi. Im Takum Alay Milchama, B'zos Ani Boteach. I'm not worried. If I face enemy struggles, battles, no matter what I face, no matter what adversity I confront, B'zos Ani Boteach. I'm not worried. Why? Because B'zos, in this I rely. What is the bezos, bezos ani boteach? What's the bezos? Lots of divrei Torah, lots of gematrias. What's the bezos? He says bezos, bezos ha Torah. Bezos ha Torah. Shasam Moshe. Bezos ani boteach, bezos ha Torah. With all the variables, with all the things that change, with all the culture and pop culture, with all the mores of it, with everything that changes in the world, bezos ani boteach. The thing that's a constant, what I can rely on, what I can immerse myself in, what protects me, bezos anibateach, bezos ha Torah. Torah is tshuva, tshuva is Torah. So the Rambana, the Sforno are not disagreeing with the Rashi. They all agree. What is kiyam mitzvah azos? What is this mitzvah that's not in the heavens? It's not the other side of the sea. It's not so far away. It is accessible. What is that mitzvah? It is the mitzvah of Torah. It is the mitzvah of tshuva. Now the Ota Plus HaTorah quotes something fascinating. I mentioned the Gemara in Erevin, Nunhe, the Gemara in their Darshans, Lo me'ever le'yam. You won't learn Torah, live Torah, you won't excel in Torah if Lo timatze lo besachranim velo betagarim. It can't be found among the sailors and the merchants. You're always traveling and flying on business. You're always pursuing and chasing the next deal. You're not going to succeed in Torah. So there was a great gon, Rav Avram Danzig. He was the great, great, great grandfather of Rabbi Maskowitz. And the Chai Adam, he wrote the Chai Adam, the Chachmas Adam. What did he do for a living? He was a big Rav, big Av Bezdin, big Rosh Hashiva, big Dayan. Eh, 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 eh. No, nope. what was he? He was a big businessman. He was a big businessman. And he never wanted to earn a living. He wanted, never wanted to take an income from Torah. He had a, he had a Parnassah. He earned uh, his livelihood from the business that he did. And he wrote the Chai Adam. And he wrote the Chachmas Adam. And we quoted all over the Mishnah Bura. And we quoted all over Halacha. And we passed it all the time like the Chai Adam, the Chachmas Adam. So I, how could Rav Avram Danzig consider himself a posek? How can he consider himself worthy of having learned Torah, to teach Torah, to pass in Torah, to author Torah? He was a traveling businessman, a merchant. I thought the Gemara Darshan's Loma Eber Layam. You can't succeed in Torah if you're going to be in business. So, you know who answers it? The Chai Adam himself. In his introduction, in the Hakdama to a Sefer Chachmas Adam, here's what he writes. Listen up, business people. Frankfurt, Leipzig, Yoser Mitas Vav Shanim. He says, I know what you're all going to say. I'm publishing this safer, and the critics, the haters, they're all going to say, this businessman, this person who earned a living traveling for 15 years, Frankfurt, Leipzig, this Yekev, the Torah, Amos Nasus. When did he learn Torah? Whenever he's writing, who did he plagiarize? And if he's writing, does it have any authority? Who is he to write this, to author this? HaTorah Heida, Lo Me'ever Layam, Sheinah Metsuya Lo Betagranim, Lo Besachranim, says the Helegachaya Adam, no, my brother. When I traveled long distances, it was not pursuing wealth, God forbid. The Almighty Himself can testify. I was just trying to earn a living. I wasn't chasing wealth, I just wanted to get by. Now, 
He says, I have a tradition from my Zayda, who heard from his Zayda, that there was a, a um, pandemic, an epidemic that was coming, and he fell asleep on his Sefer, and his mother came and woke him, and she said, you should know this uh, epidemic is coming, you need to leave the city. He revealed it, and everyone was saved. He never benefited from Torah. He had ten children. He supported all of his children by earning a living. And he nevertheless always was teaching, inspiring through Torah. So that's my Masora, my great Zayda. My great Zayda went around speaking and preaching and teaching and inspiring and he never took a penny for it. He earned a living and he supported his 10 children, his family with it. And that's my Misora. Baruch I don't love money. I don't chase money. I don't pursue money. I don't count money. I earn enough to take care of my family. I don't want to take money for Torah, but I've earned it. And I've and Akarish Baruch will testify. It's never impacted or influenced or distorted or compromised my ability to learn and my ability to publish this safer. Enjoy the Chachmas Adam. So it's all based on our Pasuk, Lome Evaliyam. If you can Darshans, don't get too occupied and preoccupied with your occupation. And Rachayadam testifies, even though I earned a living, it was not, I never got confused between earning a living and living. Never get confused between earning a living and living. He says, I never got confused, and therefore the Sefer is worth publishing, and the Sefer is worth learning. Perak Lamed Pasuk Tezvav. Re'ei, nasati lefanach ha'yom ha'sachayim v'satov, v'esamav v'esara. Says the Torah, I have placed before you today, Moshe Rabbeinu turns to the people and he says, Re'ei, give a kick, look, see, observe. I have placed before you today the life and the good, the death and the evil. That which I've commanded you to follow in Hashem's ways and His footsteps. Hashem will bless you. But if you'll get distracted, if you'll turn away. I promise you today, you will be destroyed. You will be eliminated. The heaven and earth testify. Life and death are placed before you. A bracha a blessing and curse. Uvacharta v'chaim. Choose life. Moshe says, I'm telling you, I promise you. I'm giving you two choices. The two lives you could live. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Uvacharta v'chaim. Choose life. Choose life. We got a lot to say on this. Choose life. Uvacharta v'chaim. Says, the Heligagra, the Gom. Everybody's Helig. I get criticized. If everybody say like nobody said, they're all like, they're all holy. They're all holy. Says the grass somewhere. Sorry, bear with me. Oh. Chavetz Chaim brings the name of the Gra. In the Hakdama to Likute Halachas on Seder Kadshim. In the Hakdama, in the introduction to Likute Halachas on Seder Kadshim, Chavetz Chaim brings from the Gra. Why does it say Balashan Yachid? Re'e, not Ru'u, you the individual see. Madu nechtav a pasuk Balashan Yachid. Ala pasuk la adrichenu shafilim chalili yamatzav ador kezeh shalina karoi vafilu lo toil tochacha. Einzen olgei li yachid. V'alav leis chazeg odash kadosh baruch hu yikam afilu itol levador es brisa Torah. Because even though we just said nitavim kuchem, it's incumbent on all of us. We're all in it together. But you need to know that if everyone around you is not doing it. If everyone around you is abandoning it, if everyone around you is violating the Torah, Re'eh, still look, you the individual, Hashem is entering this covenant with you. He still has expectations of you. He still needs you. He still loves you. So says the Gra, that's why it's in the singular, so every singular individual realizes it's for each and every one of us. Rabbi Chezka Levenstein, Mashkiach, adds on. When, when his grandson came from America to visit him, in Eretz Yisrael, the great Mashkiach, Rabbi Chezkel, said, 
It's a mistake to think that Chaim and Mavis are equal. Unless you think, well, I could choose life or I could choose death. It's not that they each present themselves equally before me and I can stay in neutral and from the position of neutral, I can choose life or I can choose death. Now, what does the Pasuk mean? It means death is the default. I need to choose life if I want to be offsetting death. If you're not going up, you're going down. Where do you see that in the world? Becheskel didn't bring this mushal, but others do. Everything in the world is a mushal. All of Gashmis is a mushal for Ruchnius. All of every truth in the physical world is a glimpse, an insight, is a mushal for a truth in the metaphysical world. So you'll say, why can't I just hold this cup? I want to hold this cup over here. And what should happen when I let go? It should stay where it is. It won't go higher, won't go lower, won't go sideways, won't go the other way. I'm not going to show you because it's still filled with water. But if I let go, it should stay where it is. Instead, what happens? A little something called gravity. Ah, that's not so logical. Why should the default be that it falls? No one cares about your logic. Your logic is not what's true. What's true is the principle of gravity. And just like physically, everything is going down and you need to exert effort to fight gravity to lift it. So, so too in this world, Ruchni is spiritually, everything is being brought down. We're being tempted and seduced and distracted we're being compromised and corrupted and contaminated. Everything's being brought down unless we're fighting to lift it, to give it meaning, to give it purpose, and to give it height. And that's why Uvacharta Vachaim said to Bicheskel to his Einikel, it doesn't mean they present equally. Whichever one you want, and if not, you could stay in neutral. Mavis is the default. Death is the default unless you are choosing life. Says Rav Moshe, writes Rav Moshe Feinstein, Therefore, the Pasuk says, Over and over again, we keep talking about today. I got it. Today, not yesterday, not tomorrow. I got it. Why do we keep repeating Hayom today? Because every day you got to fight gravity. You can't say, I fought gravity yesterday. Today I want to live gravity free. There is no gravity free. Unless you go to outer space. You don't have a, we don't have the right, we don't have the chance, we don't have the opportunity. You can't say, I'm tired. I fought spiritual gravity yesterday, so today I'm just going to be in neutral. There is no gravity free in spirituality. So therefore, if you're not the default is you're choosing mavas, and a person has to be careful. Says the Imros Tahoros, Amaros Tahoros, back to the Amaros Tahoros, back to the holy Rach Meshrif Rebbe. We're getting the hang of that. He quotes the Panam Yafos. Who was the Panam Yafos? The Balafla, the Pinchas Alevi Hervitz. Says the Balafla. Reina Satil Fanacha. He says, Masha Amr Gemara. The Gemara Brachos tells us, Leolam Yargi Zodam Yitzhatova Yitzhara. If you ever feel tempted, distracted, seduced to indulge some instinct that's not good for you, you want to eat the unhealthy food, you want to look at what's going to corrupt your soul, you want to speak slander, gossip of others. So what are you supposed to do? Yargiz Adam Yetzar Tov Yetzahara. Inspire the Yetzar Tov to defeat the Yetzahara. So Nitzchah Muta, if your Yetzar Tov was able to overtake the Yetzahara, good. But what happens if not? Wasn't enough. Lasak the Torah. Learn Torah. If it worked, good. If not, reach Ma. That worked? Fantastic. If not, contemplate your Mamisa day of death. There's a grow that says, that's the Pshat in the Pasuk we say every morning in Yichvod. Rabos machshavos belavish. There are many thoughts in the heart of a person. V'atzas Hashemi sakum. Deciding whether to tell you over my joke about this Pasuk. But every time I have, I take my life into my own hands. I hope my sons-in-law are not listening. Rabos machshavos belavish. The baby's crying in the middle of the night. And the father and the mother are debating who has to wake up. Who has to take care? Who has to give the bottle? Who has to change the diaper? Atzas Hashem. Hashem says, He sakum. She should wake up. No, that's not the pshat in the pasuk. 
Not the Pshat and the Pasuk. You don't have to send me the emails. He should get up. He should do everything. 100%. Fine. But says the Gra, Rabbos Machshavas Bulavish. We have a lot of Yetzirah. A lot of Yetzirah. It's the age of the Yetzirah. There's billboards and cookies and pop ups. And there's the age of the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah is, ooh, Yetzirah is mighty and strong, fierce, ferocious, more than it's ever been. Yetzirah is, psh. So Rabbos Machshavas Bulavish. We got a big Yetzirah. What's the antidote? What's the answer? Atzas Hashem. Hashem's advice is Sakum. Torah, Kriyashma, Misa. Drag it to the, the base Medrash, learn Torah. If that doesn't work, Kriyashma, Rishma. And if that doesn't work, contemplate the day of death. Contemplate our mortality. Contemplate how little we're here on earth and we never know and can predict what the day will bring. Back to the Rachmash, back to the Amaras Torah, back to the Yafos. So I don't understand. If the third answer, Atzas Hashem Takum Sakum Mem is Misa, so skip right to it. Right? If that's the most effective, if that's the nuclear option, go right to it. Why do you have to first go through Yitzhah Tov, Torah, Kriya Shema, just go right to it. And the answer is because Rakim Eina Moelis Oz Yeshua Shtamash Beit Atzvus is bad for us. Sadness, it's, it's very uh, somber. It's very sad. Contemplate mortality. Think about the day of death. That's so sad. That's so down. Who wants that? So we only do it if there's no alternative. It's the nuclear option only if we've exhausted every other one. And that's the Pshat and the Pasuk. There are things called Chaim and Tov. So, I'm giving you the tools how to fight the Yitzhara. There's Chaim and Tov, which is Torah's Chaim, that's called Tov, in Tov el Torah. There's Kriya Shema, which is Omachu Shemaim. So that's Chaim and Tov, Torah and Kriya Shema. But if that doesn't work, and Ubachar Tav Chaim choose that. And if that doesn't work, then there is Yom Misa as the final alternative as the last resort, but only as the only as the last resort. Pasuk Yates, Ubacharta Vachayim, Ubacharta Vachayim, free will, Ubacharta Vachayim, choose free will. Revolba writes on these words, choose free will, Ubacharta Vachayim. Then we've got to save a few minutes for Parshas Vayelach. We've got to do something from Parshas Vayelach. Revolba says, What's Ubacharta Vachayim? What's Ubacharta Vachayim? The most elementary aspect of Bechira, of free will, is people have the ability to choose to save themselves from death in this world and the next. And throughout the generations, listen to this insight by, by uh, Revob. He writes in Ali Shor Chelek Beis, and he writes it as well in his Yimei Ratzon. Ma'amare Yimei Ratzon. He writes Emuna Bachet, his whole essay called Emuna Bachet. He says, throughout the generations, there have been all kinds of heresy. And I, I shouldn't even just, I should save this because it's not a throwaway at the end of a Parsha year. So I'm going to say it, but I'm going to repeat it. And when I repeat it, know that I know I said it. And now that we agree to that, here it goes. So Revolba writes, throughout the generations, there have been all kinds of heresy. Heresy in God, heresy in the Jewish people, heresy in our chosenness, heresy in truth. There's all kinds of heresies. But you know what we're living through? We're living through a new heresy. And it's the heresy that denies free will. It's a kfira that says that people don't have choices. Don't blame them. It's their upbringing. It's their genetics. It's the way the mother treated him. It's the way the father spoke to him. Come lie on the couch. Tell me everything. Nothing's your fault. You're not accountable. You're not responsible. There's no merit-based system to get in anywhere. There's no merit-based system. We'll wipe out debt. There's no merit-based system. We won't arrest you if you're shoplift because it's not your fault. It's the neighborhood you grew up in. It's the parents that you had. It's your genetics that you were born with. And all of that takes away your free will. So how can we hold you accountable if you have no free will? It says Revolba, all of this is a kfira. He didn't even see any of it. What I just described, he passed away already a long time ago. He didn't see the letting shoplifters run around and eliminating merit base to get into college. All, everything that we're living through today, he didn't see. And yet in his time he wrote about emuna b'chait. You have to, it takes faith to believe there's such a thing called chait. Faith in the whole institution of sin. Like, why is anyone ever accountable? Why is anyone ever accountable? 
you know, someone shared with me, uh, I shouldn't say, I should save this for an article for another. Someone just shared with me, someone did something that, that hurt them and they called them out on it. And the person said, basically as a way of excusing them, I'm doing the best I can. And the person said to me, said, this is just a new thing that can offset everything. From now on forever. Like, you know, you murdered my uh, loved one. I'm doing the best I can. You stole my money. You hit my car. You took my job. I'm doing the best. And that's like the get out of jail free card. I'm doing the best I can. If you knew my upbringing, if you knew what I face, if you know what I, that doesn't, we should, I spend a lot of time talking about sympathy, empathy, compassion, care, love, support, all of that. We have to offer all of that, provide all of that. But at the end of the day, there is no world. There are no relationships. There are no people if there's no free will. Free will is the building block of life. And that's what Volba says, this Pasuk, the whole process, Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Ne'ila, it's all about Uvachart Vachayim. You can't believe in Yom Kippur if you don't believe in Amunah Bachet. We are responsible for our actions. We can be accountable for our actions. They mean something. Amunah Bachet, they mean something. It's not a get out of jail free. I'm doing the best that I can. It's not a get out, it deserves a lot more, but that is the insight of Revolba. Okay, I had more I wanted to tell you, but let's just get over to Pasha's Vayelach. Let's say something in Vayelach. I have to say something in Vayelach. Oh, we had so much to say in Vayelach. Something in Vayelach. Vayelach Moshe, by Deber Sadvar, my Elah, Ko Yisrael. Vayelach Moshe. Moshe went and he said all these things to the Jewish people. What's Vayelach Moshe? Throw back to Rav Druk. Rav Druk. Eish Tamid. The great Rav Druk. Vayelach Moshe. Says the Targum Yonas and Berazil. Also, Moshe the Mishka Mesu Ufano, Milal Yaspas Gama Pas Gamaya, Ha'ilain him Ko Yisrael. So the question is, where'd he go? Vayelach Moshe. And Moshe was off. Where was he off to? Where was the destination? What did he plug into Waze? Or Google Maps? Whatever your choice. Where did he go? Vayelach. Where'd he go? So the Targum Yonas says, he went. Where'd he go? Lamishkan base Ulfana. He went to the base Medrash. He went to the old base Medrash and he shared all this from there. He went to the base Medrash and shared all this from there. And the Ramban expands on this. And the Ramban says, Moshe went me machan levia, machan Yisrael achadam, kimishir to lipatim echaver balito rishus mimenu. The Rabbin Bachaya says similarly. Orchaim Akadosh says, We're not sure where he went. One opinion. The other is, um, he went to say goodbye. It was his end of his life. It was the end of his years. He went on a goodbye tour. He went. He went. 40 days. says, 40 days before a person dies, the neshama already begins to exit. It already begins to be extracted. It already begins to ascend. Moshe's neshama already began to exit. It already began to ascend. Vayelech. It already began to go. The Kliyakar has a different pshat. She wrote to Moshe Lama, Lo ucha lo d'latzeis v'lavo, Lo ucha yesh lo shnei panim. O lo ucha mamish, O lo ucha l'eini rishay milashon lo sucha. I wanted to get into this, we don't have time. How do you read this pasuk? Moshe says to them, I'm 120 years. Vayemar aleim ben Moshe. Pasuk beis. Vayemar aleim ben meh v'esim shon anokhi ayom. I'm 120 today. I can't continue to come and go. Hashem said, I'm not going in. So is this all one sentence? Does it all go together? Is it broken into separate parts? We'll come back to the Rav Druk, maybe another year. Moshe says three things in this Pasuk. He says, I'm 120. I can't come and go anymore. And Hashem's not letting me into the yard day. So Rashi says, one of them is an explanation for the other. When he said, I can't go over the yard and I'm not going into Israel, the reason I can no longer go is not because I'm weak, but Hashem has not given me permission to go in. My going and coming is over because I'm not allowed to go in. Forced retirement. So I'm done. Other commentators learn the last two are really two separate statements. And besides for the fact that he was physically weak, let's say, Svilavo, Hashem also didn't allow him in. I'm old, I'm retired, I can't go and come anymore. And also, I'm not allowed to go in. So, are these all one sentence, cause and effect? Or are they separate? Svarno explains all three. The words, Ben Esam, Mev Esam Shalanochi, Moshe was telling them not to be sad about my death, because Beteva, a person dies. 
Nobody's immortal. No one lives forever. I'm 120, and it's natural. I'm going to die. And says the Svarna, what do you see from here? What is the maximum one can live? 120. Then on the words, Moshe is saying, even if I had continued to live, I would not be able to continue as your leader. And finally, Hashem and Hashem said to me, I can't cross the Yardin. And even if I could continue to be a leader, Hashem said, I can't enter the Yardin. So it's clear from the Svarno, the three statements are independent. But why did Moshe have to introduce them by saying, I'm 120? So people say to each other, Admei of Esrim. Some people write a letter, dear so-and-so, Amush, Admei of Esrim Shana. An acronym, Amush, Admei of Esrim Shana. We wish another happy birthday, should live to 120. Sounds even better in the Yiddish. We say, and that's the old joke. What do you say to somebody on their 120th birthday? Have a good day. Have a nice day. Where did such a thing come from? Where did it come from until 120? So based on the Svarno, it could be. You learn it from here. Moshe was hinting this is the max. Rav Weinfeld Shlita says he has another source. At the end of Parshas Breshis, there are mysterious psukim. There were these nefilim. So there are non-rabbinic sources that suggest Hashem put a cap on human life. A person can't live past 120. But it's difficult to understand because there are people who did live past 120, notably such as Avram and Sarah, who lived past 120. Rashi explains the Pasuk, the Ramban and that Pasuk, that 120, it's complicated. But Rashi explains the Pasuk, the Mabu is going to come in 120 years, but according to this explanation, it's referring to putting a cap on human life. So how do you understand that people live past 120? <coughs> Are they really human? Is there a piece of them that is beyond human? So what does it mean? The bracha to 120. Are we saying they shouldn't live past 120? We're out of time. But anyway, Rav Weinfeld does a whole essay on this. I wanted to get into... Vayelach Moshe, where did he go? person's never done Vayelach. The last day of his life. It could be on the last day of your life. Vayelach, but you got to be moving. The angel stands still, Nitzavim. Vayelach, the human being, is going. Perhaps Moshe's greatest act of being Rabbeinu, our teacher, is Vayelach. He was never done. He was never finished. He was always on the move. If you saw Salanter, once walked by a tailor who was working deep into the night. And he said, you know what time it is? What are you still working? And he said, as long as the flame of the candle flickers, there's work to be done. If you saw Salanter learn from there, as long as the candle flickers, there's work to be done. As long as one is alive, Vayelach, there's work to be done. There's work to be done. Vayelach, Moshe was Vayelach. And then we have the end of the parish, about 10 kisses, the 613th commandment, write a Sefer Torah. But how is writing a Sefer Torah given to us? Write, doesn't say write a Sefer Torah. Kis v'lachem es, hashira. What is the Torah called, A? Eh? Why is the Torah called a song? I had such beautiful ideas. You'll have to come next year. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget, Sunday, Tuesday night. Tuesday night we have the anger management, 8 o'clock. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, you got 10 minutes of meeting, live with Amuna. And tomorrow night, we have Rabbi Nsi on uh, Tversky. And we also have uh, tomorrow night behind the Bima with David Fishoff. Anyone doesn't know David Fishoff, you're going to find it a fantastic, fantastic conversation. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay holy. Have a great day.